What's up guys and welcome to the channel. I hope you've all been having a great day and I hope you're ready for some anime news and discussion. Oh, and yeah, uh, I know all about the spring lineup update that Crunchyroll posted earlier yesterday where they added about 12 new shows to the season roster, which frankly look like a bunch of shows you'd only care about if there was literally nothing else to watch ever. So it's barely worth mentioning. So we're just going to move on to the topic at hand, which is Crunchyroll's new YouTube channel. That was the old Funimation YouTube channel. As you may already know, Funimation's YouTube channel, which has been in existence since 2006, is now part of the Crunchyroll brand. And as such, Crunchyroll posted in an announcement yesterday that they would continue to provide dubbed content on the now revamped Crunchyroll dubs channel. Before you get your fandom in a twist in all of this excitement, it basically means that it will be more or less business as usual with some minor tweaking to the release of video content. In the announcement posted yesterday, Crunchyroll says, Funimation is unifying under the Crunchyroll brand, and as such, so is their YouTube channel, Funimation's YouTube channel, which consists of 3.7 million subscribers, has been in operation since 2006, and is now becoming Crunchyroll dubs. What can you expect now? Well, mostly all of the same content you've loved and more of it. Crunchyroll dubs will continue to provide anime clips, trailers, and full episodes of your favorite English dubbed anime. Not only that, Crunchyroll dubs will be releasing weekly dubbed episode one drops every Saturday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, starting on April 9th, with ReZero starting life in another world. Be sure to subscribe and watch free dubbed episodes of anime every week. And of course, they go on to continue to say that they've got their other, you know, still Crunchyroll Collections channel. So if you were hoping that this was going to be some new home for dubbed anime shows, you can take those hopes and dreams and toss them right in the nearest garbage can. It's only the first dubbed episode as a type of digital snack, which will get viewers to craving more and thereby head to the site for that premium subscription dinner. 3.7 million subscribers. Wow. It must be nice to just walk into a already established YouTube channel like that. Not that I would know anything about that, of course. I'm not jealous. In other anime-related news, it seems that Netflix isn't quite finished placing their sweaty hands all onto the anime scene by slating at least 40 new shows for 2022. Not that it matters to me in any way, because despite an ever-growing library of titles to choose from, I've never watched more than two, or at best three, anime on Netflix. Sort of the same way that I don't go to Walmart when I'm looking to buy gourmet wine. It's just a connection that I can't seem to make in my idiot brain. Nevertheless, it appears that enough people actually do watch anime on Netflix, despite there being a whole myriad of issues with their production qualities, translations, and handling of dubs. I would mention their release of Neon Genesis Evangelion, but who really wants to talk about that for the umpteenth time? An article published six days ago on CBR.com says that more than half of Netflix's global users use the service to watch anime in 2021, and the future of Japanese animation premiering on Netflix appears promising. Quote, anime is one of the cornerstones of our investment in Japan, watched by nearly 90% of our members here last year, says Kohei Obara, Netflix's anime creative director, who told this to Variety. At the same time, interest in anime has grown worldwide, and more than half of our members globally tuned into it last year. From diversifying our sales to bringing back fan favorites, we want to continue growing our members' discovery and love for anime, both in Japan and around the world, with this next chapter of anime on Netflix. It probably has nothing to do with the fact that there was a global pandemic with a lot of people sitting at home on their asses with very little to do except maybe watch Netflix, but that's not for me to say. It's just Food for thought. Netflix plans to continue investing in anime and will debut 40 series on the service in 2022. Returning shows include episodes 13 through 24 of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex 2045 Season 2, and Season 1 of Spragon, the long-awaited anime reboot of Hiroshi Takashige's manga series, which was first adapted into an anime film in 1998. Is it really long-awaited? I don't know. 
The article goes on to say that in 2022, Netflix will also serve as the home of several animated series based on other media franchises, some of which will be animated by Japanese studios. Chief among these is Cyberpunk Edge Runners, a series based in the world of CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077 video game. Whether you approve of how they handle anime, whether you approve of how they handle live action shows, it's all subjective. But one thing is for sure, Netflix is going in whole hog, both feet. They, they don't even care. They're just, they're doing this thing. Anime apparently is the future for Netflix. And that could either be a good thing for us or a bad thing for us. It's, it's all up in the air at this point. So if you've ever completely forgotten about an anime series and then came across somebody talking about it and then realized, oh yeah, that's a thing. I might need to look into that again. Same thing happened with me and Don Machi. So I'm going through CBR.com looking for articles to read. And I came across this one that says... Don Machi, season four, how to get started with it or something like that. And my brain was like, yeah, that's still a thing. With the upcoming season four scheduled for later this year, it seems that some fans might be in need of a refresher, I guess. I myself am not one of them. As a long-standing fan of the franchise, I won't even begin to suggest that it's a series that only gets better with each installment because it doesn't. And with the upcoming season four looming on the not too distant horizon, I'm in the same boat as a lot of fans wondering if it's going to be the season that makes it all better or just gives us more of the slog because my God, that last season was a slog. What started off as a fantastic show has slowly become a series of side quests and one-offs that seem to have no real cohesive direction. Is it about exploring a dungeon? Is it about defeating unruly gods that make trouble in the world? Or maybe doing like the title suggests and actually trying to pick up girls in a dungeon? I could even be talking realistically here, just picking them up with your hands because they've fallen down. I don't know. Somebody do something with this title already. If we're lucky, those and many, many more questions may be answered very soon. So that's where I'd like to get your opinion on all of this. To recap, we've got Crunchyroll revamping the old Funimation YouTube channel, Netflix making more of a push for anime, and of course, more Don Machi that might just send me into fits and rants again. I'd love to get your thoughts on all of this, so be sure to head to the comments and let me know your take on it. As always, it'd be great if you hit that like button and subscribe if you are new. Hit that bell icon for notifications, and if you want to support us directly and offer some suggestions for upcoming video topics, be sure to head over to the Patreon and consider making a donation. You can pledge as little as a dollar, which will keep me fueled with coffee. Have an amazing day. Keep being awesome. And I'll see you guys in the next video.